Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnit is speaking to Christina Chong about Unstable, which recently dropped on Netflix. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm going to say the chat with you. It's interesting because the first thing that kind of stood out for me when I was watching Unstable was the pandemic was a time where a lot of us were doing a lot of like self-reflection and figuring a lot of things out. And you watch this show with an amazing cast with all these different characters are doing soul searching and self-reflection in some way, episode to episode. So I feel like a show like Unstable becomes like immediately more relatable to the audience member because we had the time to do a lot of self-reflection for like three, four years. I'm curious if like you ever thought about that at all with a show like this, the self-reflection component. Well, that's a good observation. Um, Definitely Ellis is, you know, the one that's constantly doing that kind of self-reflection, right? That character, Rob Lowe's character. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like Jean, my character, for sure was that person to to begin with. She's this, I think they're all weird-ish. Not so weird that they're not, you know, they're a little eccentric, all of them, but all relatable in some way. And I feel like, um, which I like about the show, it's not like someone's so offbeat that you're like, huh? Everyone kind of has their salt all tied to, to in some way to the earth. <laughs> um, and I think this, the Jean character was interesting to me because she is that they were sort of looking for somebody who's the mix of the, what they called like the air, oh, goofy kind of like out there spiritual, but also she's on the board yeah. and she has real concerns about like the direction the company is going. And so she was this like nice sort of blend of let's meditate, let's check in, let's connect, but also what are you doing? Are you, are you actually leading this company into the ground or are we, what are we doing with the company? Right. And I feel a little bit like to your point, maybe the past three years in this pandemic has lent to a lot of people being able to sort of do that, to be able to be like, Hey, I'm kind of concerned about like this, that, the other in the practical world, but also like, what's the, bigger picture in my life, right? And like emotionally, what's happening and spiritually, where are we going? Totally. And, you know, it's a good segue to kind of my next question. I mean, the workplace kind of component of the show is one of those things where we love watching, you know, the workplace comedy, the workplace sitcom. We enjoy the laughs and everything. But I feel like we enjoy the ensemble cast and these characters that are really real and are going through something that everyone can relate to and everything. So what was it like specifically working with this cast and the, especially with kind of the workplace kind of component of it? I love it. I love that it's intergenerational, you know, and I love that. um, Well, I mean, it was weird for me. It was like a little surreal to be like, oh, hey, I get to play the friend and, you know, fellow co-workery of um, someone who used to be like on a poster Mm -hmm. in my room. That's weird. Yeah. Right. That was kind of like a surreal uh, meta weird moment for me. Um, And then observing Johnny and Rob's relationship play out fictionally, but maybe also non-fictionally. Um, and then also very cool to get to work with Sean Clifford, whom I adore. Yeah. Uh, not I, more so now that I've met her, but also was a huge fan from Fleabag. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. So what was it like to work with? And then also Fred Armisen. I mean, what? Like, getting to do a couple scenes with that guy. You know what I I mean? I will say this though, sorry to interrupt, it's very important. I mean, a lot of people got to work with Christina Chong. I'm just saying. Oh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm I'm just saying, (laughs) it goes both ways, just saying. Oh, thank you. And I'm sure they're (laughs) all in their living rooms thinking about it right now. Uh, it was it was fantastic to get to work with all of them and also to meet the others too, like Emma and Rachel and Aaron. I mean, it was really nice to work with that group. They're a really cool bunch of cats. Yeah, but it's interesting though, because yes, I know people know like the good doctor and everything. It's one of the biggest shows, but like there's you've been you've worked on so many of like the most incredible TV shows out there. Like you were on you worked on West Wing, like you worked on so many of them. Like it's crazy. I did. I- I mean, it is crazy when I think about it. It means I've also been on Earth for a long time. 
Okay, now you're making me feel bad. I wasn't. No, I no, I, you know, no. I'm just. It's not you. It's me. No, no, um, I just, no. But it's it's crazy though because it's just you look at. Uh, it's incredible to see kind of the work you've done and like even the Good Doctor just kind of seeing you know it's over uh, over a hundred episodes you've been on that show. I cannot believe it. So like, many I, episodes. So many times that we've been doing medical speak, you know, and you'd think by now I'd have a, I'd, I'd be an actual doctor. Um, but yeah, thank you for saying that. And yes, I was on West Wing. And I, weirdly, that's when I first met Richard Schiff. So then that was a weird full circle moment to, you know, then work with him more mm -hmm. on The Good Doctor, right? A hundred percent. And it's interesting too, because I'm just curious because, you know, I remember when The Good Doctor came out, even like season one, like I remember like the, I, when it came out, the streaming kind of stuff was starting to kind of come out, like become big powerful, right? Like it was one of those things where like I was watching The Good Doctor every week and everything. I'm just curious for you, was there a moment, was it early on with that show where it was like, wow, like I am part of something special? Was it after season three? Like I'm just curious because that show people love that show but i'm just curious when it started kind of sinking in for you more about how amazing something like that to be part of was well i mean i came into the show probably at the sixth episode of the first season yep. so and when we shot it it hadn't aired yet mm -hmm. so when we when we when i started shooting it I, there was no feedback from the world it was just about you know, and you're always curious when you're doing something like that, like, how is this going to be received? So yes. nice to actually be able to start on a show without that feedback so that you can truly get a sense of like whether what you really think of the show without other people starting to fly in with their opinions. And I have to say, I knew it was going to be good because obviously David Shore and Freddie Highmore were attached and yep. they're both talented in their own way. Um and then it wasn't until season two, though, because I wasn't I was wasn't series regular, so it was wonderful to moonlight on the show in the first season. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they asked me to become a, a you know a regular, that's when I thought, okay, wow, that's that's an exciting opportunity, yeah. and that's when I got to spend more time there. And it, that's when it really sank in. I would say was I mean I knew it was a good show. I thought it was a great show, and I knew it was it was good material. But personally experiencing it, um, just working with everybody, I think it really sunk in at the top of season two when I, I got to spend the time. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I think different shows have those kind of moments, those peaking moments, right, of mm -hmm. seasons mm -hmm. where it was just the talk of the town and it got added to like – a streaming platform, right? There, like every show has a different kind of like a show might have been on for like nine seasons, you yeah. know, but like after episode, like it was only season six when it really yeah. started to be kind of a global beast. You know what I mean? I feel like it depends on the situation, right? And the climate of the streaming and everything. 100%. Yeah. There's a ton of variables involved, but I think for me, it seems like it really like season two was a great season. Yeah. I'm not saying the other ones, you know, subsequently were just terrible. I just mean for me, <laughs> I feel like season two was a really magical one. Um, personally, it, from my character, I mean. Mm -hmm. So that for me, if you're asking me, I think. Well, I mean, the most recent, the recent episodes, I mean, I can't even, like, what's that like reading those scripts? Like, I don't want, I, like, certain things that kind of happen. I mean, I don't want to say full things just in case people are kind of late and want to go binge Good Doctor because the, sure. the Good Doctor is a big, it's a binge worthy show. Like, you can go and, like, binge, binge that right now. Oh, thank you. Yes. And you can do that on Hulu. <laughs> yeah, Hulu. But, like, I, I can't, it, might, it was going to be emotional seeing, I hope you know what I'm talking about a little bit, but, like, it's going to be emotional kind of reading, reading that, right? Yes. And you know, it's interesting. We, um, we used to do our, we do, a, we do table reads every weekly ones yeah. or every time there's a new episode as a cast and with the, with the, you know, the director and the writer and the showrunners, we all do these cast table reads of the next episode. Mm -hmm. And we used to do them in person pre COVID. Um, so it was easier to feel sort of the feeling in the room and the energy was a little more palpable to be goofy. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, we would cry sometimes during the table reads. I believe know? it. I believe um, it. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And on Zoom, yes, you feel it, but it's just, you know, you're on a screen and everybody's removed and we're these little squares. So it's a little bit tougher, although the writing is good enough that obviously mm -hmm. there's something to feel, you feel it, but yeah. Yeah, when you read the scripts, you're, you know, you always kind of wonder like what, you know, of course with the guest storylines too, those are very emotional too. Absolutely. But you also wonder sort of like within the cast, like what's happening and who's, you know, whose heart's going to get broken or. Yeah. I do want to get back to Unstable because it, it recently dropped on Netflix and I right. really love this show. I have to tell you, I really had a good time with it. Um, okay. You mentioned, you know, Rob Lowe and everything. I just kind of want to know, because there might, maybe there wasn't any, but like, what were the like conversations like with Rob, like before kind of doing kind of scenes and like being on set? Because sometimes that, that question's kind of like, of throwaway because sometimes people are like, ah, there weren't many conversations. Like we just like went in. <laughs> I mean, I think if there were like massive major conversations that didn't happen in front of us on set, do you know what I mean? I think father and son sort of like worked those kinks out before coming to set, right? Yeah. Because they co-created the show and Johnny, yeah. you know, wrote them and stuff. So um, along with Victor Fresco, um, and, you know, it was eight episodes, two directors. I mean, the set felt very intimate in a way, um, very different from the Good Doctor experience. Uh, not good or bad, just different. And so it was like this smaller group. Yep. And it felt a lot, um, the room felt smaller. The conversations were quick. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And if anything, the conversation was more about like, how do we make this line funnier? Or how do we make this moment work better? I love and hearing that stuff. And it wasn't a long conversation. We just try it. Like director Jay or Mark Buckland oh, would come in and they'd go. I love that. Um, Christina, that's, no, we love the like weird thing you just did with your face. Can you just deliver this one straight? Or just say it faster. And I, okay. And then, you yeah. know, we'd do it and then we'd move on. It's quick. Absolutely. It's funny you mentioned the beginning, like, like, because Rob Lowe, he has so much, like, his body of work is, is, incredible. is incredible. And I see a lot of people always talk about, like, Parks and Rec and everything. And I get it. You know what I mean? But for me, one project, like, there's so many, but, like, for me, like, I mean, Wayne's World is always going to be the one. <laughs> in particular, the one line I have in my mind. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? I believe so. I want, say it. I want to, I, I'm pretty sure. Cream of some young guy. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's. <laughs> I gotta, you see, sometimes I have a bad yeah. habit of bringing back kind of like some of the most iconic kind of movies on interviews. And then like I wrap this interview and there's a chance I might go watch Wayne's World tonight. <laughs> I might too. That was a good one from like. How old is that movie? I mean, the Bohemian, the Bohemian Rhapsody scene in that movie is probably one of the greatest scenes ever in a movie, in my opinion. It's it's so, I mean, and I remember watching it and being surprised. I mean, because we hadn't seen a lot of comedy out of him at that point, yeah. had we? No. Well, we knew him. A, well, I mean, like, no, I don't think so. I mean, he did young, so. he did, he did young blood, like the hockey movie, like yeah. Rob Lowe. And like, it's true. There wasn't, it, yeah, it's true. So when he came on and I was like, I mean, is this, is this going to be good? And then I was like, oh my God, he's so good. I grew up in Canada, right? So I knew Youngblood as yeah. the hockey. So a lot of people don't know about that movie. I love Youngblood. I don't know if you oh, ever yeah. saw that. Did you see that? With Patrick Swayze? Um, it was a hockey movie? Know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was, oh, yeah. it's like, it, it was a while ago. Like <laughs> if you brought that up to Rob, he's probably so like, yeah. <laughs> old. I remember when Strange Brew came out. Oh my goodness. Speaking of Canadian. Oh man. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's <laughs> so okay. What is do you have? Because do you is your favorite movie of all? Like, are you like you love comedy, right? Do I like comedy? You love comedy. Is comedy like one of your like is your favorite movie of all time? Like a com a comedy. Oh God, this is so hard. It's not Please. for me though. Like honestly, my okay, my favorite movie of all time. No competition. Like okay. zero. Okay. There's like. My favorite movie of all time is School of Rock with Jack Black. That is my favorite I movie of all time. I love that movie. Yeah. I love that movie. Uh, I can't say it's my favorite. Only yeah. because <laughs> I like a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, I think it's almost about, like... There's different my... movies, though, what you love. Like, there's there's different lists, right? 
Right. Like there's lists of like, what did I love in high school? Yes. Those things I love because I'm like, oh my God, I remember. And it, it's because it's nostalgic. It takes you back to a certain time. Yeah. Right. Like the eighties. Yep. Like John Hughes movies. Like mm. I used to know the lines. To Uncle every, Buck. Like is Uncle line. Buck. No, no, I didn't know all the lines to Uncle Buck. But no, but I'm just saying John Hughes, like Uncle Buck was one of my That's favorite true. ones. That's true. Yeah. But I'm talking like, oh, like 16, 16 candles. candles. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, and you know, just movies from the 80s in general, right? I mean, like The Princess Bride, not John Hughes, mm -hmm. but like, do you know that movie? When I did an interview with Carrie Lewis, like that's all I wanted to talk about. It is what you want. Okay, oh my God, what, what did that's you say? That's always the <laughs> toughest thing, right? Like with this interview too, because you, and like so, most of the time you ask strategic questions that it gets brought up. Like for example, we're talking about Unstable, but we got to throw the good doctor on West Wing, which we did. But that's yeah. always the, the, the toughest one, especially like on Junkets where you're, you're there to talk about a project, right? But it would be for cool sure. if you could squeeze in, you know, the Princess Bride, Carrie Uis, Twister, like a little bit of those, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I would love to sit down and talk to him about that. Yeah, I know. It's it's so crazy. What and did he say? Was it amazing to be working with Mandy Patinkin? And I mean, like... Yeah, and, yeah. Oh my, I mean, he, I mean, he, he said that movie will never leave him. It can't. No, it can't. Like, it, it hasn't left me and I had nothing to do I mean, do I was a big it. wrestling fan growing up. So, like, I obviously asked about Andre the Giant and there's some cool stories there. So, oh, cool. yeah, no, Thank it's... You. It's... it's uh, Stop There's... rhyming and I mean it. Does anybody want a peanut? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Wallace Shawn also. Oh my goodness. I feel like uh, there's we love the same movies this is amazing this is so good um but uh yeah unstables per, uh is on netflix now they could check that yes, out you said drop. you can stream it on netflix please do and watch the series all the way through that makes the difference mm -hmm, absolutely and then okay. the good doctor on hulu if they want to check that out as well on you hulu catch you up. can binge it all summer and then we'll be back for season seven it hasn't been announced officially but we're hoping fingers crossed christina thank you so much for your time it was really great chatting with you I know. So good to chat with you and meet you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Anytime. And Instagram, if they just put Christina Chong, they'll find like they'll find you, right? The Christina Chang underscore. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the spell underscore <laughs> otherwise there's a bunch of people that kind of look like they're me but it's not they gotta get the underscore no absolutely no but you 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 said it chang when it's pronounced chong just in case they don't put right. an o i oh, I, right. I see Thank what you, you did there <laughs> see what i said i did that i did that for everybody absolutely well this has been pop turn if youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes unstable is streaming now worldwide on netflix until next time this is christina chong and pd beats signing off Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.